I had the chance this morning, and it was so busy last week. We did a tribute, of course, to Mike Goldberg, our friend and partner here on the show, longtime voice of the UFC. Regardless of what happened with his situation and why he's no longer in that chair, Goldie will always be the voice of the UFC. That will always be Goldie's microphone. That will always be Goldie's chair. I don't care who it is. And by the way, God help us if it's Mario Lopez. Can we please be saved by the bell from that one? I mean, don't put Mario Lopez in that job. Jim Rome, I could partially understand. But even then, to me, a talk show host, TV host, who's really only famous because Jim Everett slapped him around. And if you don't remember that, Google it. He said, call me Chris one more time. And Rome called him Chris, and he got thrown all over the stage. And, of course, it was on every show in America. It made Jim Rome famous and launched his career, not taking anything away from his career, but a sensationalist, to say the least, Jim Rome. And a guy who, to me, wouldn't be about what's best for the sport And it's going Hollywood. We've talked about this a thousand times, and that is exactly what's going on with the UFC. So anyway, almost 20 years in that seat, Mike Goldberg, the voice of the UFC. Every big fight you've ever heard, every event you've ever watched, except for a couple over that time span, it was Goldie's voice that was the soundtrack. He, as much as any other person responsible for the rise and growth of the UFC, he was there before the Fertitas bought it. Think about that. Before the Fertitas bought it. For a while, too, not just a couple months or a year. He was there a long time before the Fertitas even bought it. Then it sold again. New owners come in. And for whatever reason, they've decided to make a change. They hire this kid from ESPN and Glory Kickboxing, who's a nobody. No disrespect, I'm a nobody, too. But obviously, that is not to fill Goldie's shoes. And regardless of who they bring in, you will not fill Mike Goldberg's shoes. That chair at Suns games will always belong to Al McCoy, whether he's there or not. Right? Dodger Stadium, Vin Scully, Harry Carey, Mike Goldberg with the UFC is that guy. Nobody will ever do it in the NFL like Summerall and Madden. Nobody will ever do it in the UFC like Goldie and Joe. And now that team has been cut in half. And they better be careful because when you do that, it's never the same. Anyway, uh, Richie took some time this morning to put together a little tribute for us to put out there for our buddy, Mike Goldberg. And I'll tell you some things on the other side of this little tribute that we did and my thoughts about that situation, but here it is. Here we go, our main event of the evening. of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. UFC President Dana White. Ari Emanuel. Patrick Weitzel. My buddy Bruce Connell. I love you, brother. Anthony Giordano. You are the best. April Jackie. Mike Sack. Liz Robson. Niner. Next to me. Since March of 2000. Frosty Marin. Crew Mark. Susie. Man, you know what? You guys are the best. Family will be family for life, and that will never change. For my partner, Joe Rogan, Mike Goldberg, saying so long. Happy New Year, everybody. There it was. That was Goldie's sign-off. But my point is we wanted to do something for Goldie, and I talked to him for a while this morning. I want to get into that in a second. But literally was watching, and you know those shows. I mean, the top 200 fighters of all time. I'm sitting there watching about three of those episodes last night. And it's one of those shows, if you haven't seen it, where You know, they have all these fighters and people around the UFC journalists talking about that fighter and what they were like and what they brought to the table and, you know, why they were so great and reminiscing on their careers. And number one was John Jones, by the way, which is a surprise. Number two, Anderson Silva. But as I'm looking at the top 10, okay, and Tito Ortiz wasn't in the top 10. He's another one who's persona non grata with the UFC. But I'm looking at the top 10 and I'm seeing Jose Aldo, number nine, almost left the UFC, because he was so mad at the way they were doing things this past year. And then it keeps going. And I see Randy, the natural couture, not talking to the UFC. And then I see Chuck, the Iceman Liddell, just fired by the UFC. And then I see Matt Hughes, also just fired by the UFC. And then I see, as it continues, George St. Pierre, whose comeback fight was blocked by the UFC this past year. And then I see Anderson Silva, who is very unhappy and feeling disrespected by the UFC. 
Very, very troubling that the biggest names in the history of the sport are no longer involved with the organization. Think about that. These are the guys who built the house that they live in now. It may be a a 45, 50-room mansion when it started as a one-bedroom, but these are the guys who built it, man. Dana didn't build that house. He was a big part in it. The fighters did with their blood, with their sweat, with their tears, with their bodies. And those guys, think about that list again. Aldo almost left. Couture gone. Liddell fired. Hughes fired. GSP not there. Anderson Silva feeling disrespected. Goldie gone. They kicked Ariel Hawani out of an event. Who was more responsible on the journalistic side than Ariel Hawani building the UFC? Man, it's a brutal business. It's cutthroat. And to just show Goldie the door like that and not do anything to honor the man? Not do anything for the fans who love this guy and love your sport for everything he did? His son had his back. Cole on Twitter, he took to Twitter and said some things, but very, very surprising. Here today, gone tomorrow. What have you done for me lately? Go hug Rhonda for 45 minutes. Cool, I get it. She can still make you money too. Don't think that's not part of it. But in a sport that's all about respect, this just blows my mind. I'm not there. I don't know the inner workings of this. I don't know what's going on with Dana or anybody else. All I know is the facts are the facts, and something needs to be done about this. And I'm here today to tell you right now, if Goldie doesn't go in the Hall of Fame this coming summer, there's something wrong big time with that. I want to start the campaign right now on Cage Side Seat. Goldie Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Goldie. Summer 2017 at the UFC Fan Expo and Fight Week. He has to go in. Hall of Fame. There can't be a Hall of Fame without Goldie in it. His voice has been the soundtrack of every big fight in the history of this organization, save for a couple. You can't just run everybody off and have them be persona non grata and have them not want to be, in some cases, a part of your organization. That's my thought on that. I talked to Goldie for a while this morning. Everything that we said is off the record. He's going to do his interview when he's ready, and it's going to be with Ariel Helwani. As a professional, I don't like that because I'm competitive. As a human being, I get it. Ariel was his guy for a long time before I came around. Ariel was real good to him when he was sick a couple years back, and everybody was ripping him. I get it. He'll be back on. I told him I love him, and I wish him the best. He'll land on his feet. But when so many people who built your house either don't want to go there anymore or they're not invited, that's a big, big, big problem. And that's one of my problems with the world we live in right now. And that's my rant for today right here on Cage Side Seat. Jose Shorty Torres is going to join me on the other side. The Titan FC flyweight champion. Of course, Tim Elliott back in the UFC. Shorty was the interim champ. And Shorty's got a fight coming up, a big one, on January 21st at Titan FC 43 against Pedro Nobre. And Shorty's a champ. He's always been a champ. He's one of those new breeds, man. you got to love this guy. Jose Shorty Torres, if you don't know him, you will. He's coming up next right here on Cage Side Seat. <laughs> 